I used to think weight loss with type 1 diabetes was just about carbs and willpower. Every time I tried to do it right, I'd end up low, frustrated, stuck in survival mode, right? And eating more calories to fix a low than I actually burned from the workout itself. In a recent experiment while training for an Ironman, I gained 12 pounds of fat in just over a month despite burning thousands of calories. See, that's not bad luck, that's a system failure. And it's the same trap most T1Ds like myself are in right now without even realizing it. So if you haven't met me, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I live with type one diabetes. I'm also a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. And here's the kicker. Most of us are still playing by rules that are all flat out wrong. Rules like insulin causes weight gain, right? Or carbs make you fat. Or if I just exercise more, the weight will come off. See, in this video, we're gonna bust those myths wide open. And I'm gonna show you, number one, the hypo tornado and why it's the number one fat loss killer for type one diabetics like us. Number two, why calorie counting alone can actually backfire for us. Number three, the exact fat loss formula I use with my clients to burn fat without burning out. And at the very end, I'll tell you about the most popular diet for T1Ds, especially in the world right now, and why it might actually be secretly stalling your fat loss. Let me tell you a story. While training for my Ironman, I tripled my longest bike ride in just two weeks. I went from riding 20 miles, which I thought was a lot at the time, to 60. And that ended up still not being a lot compared to the workouts that I would do later on. But for that one specifically, 60 miles on a bike was three hours and eight minutes total over 1,000 calories burned. Over time, 60 mile bike rides just kind of became part of my normal routine, but the blood sugars were anything but that. And yet, even with all of that exercise, the scale went up. During that specific ride, I had burned 1,000 calories, right? But I had consumed 202 grams of carbs without a single unit of bolus insulin, just to not go low, right? And you'd think, burn it, eat it, balance it out, right? Nope. I got caught in something called the hypo tornado. Now the hypo tornado, here's how it works. You exercise, you go low, you treat with fast carbs, those extra calories get stored as fat, you push harder next time and you repeat. Now on a bike ride, because it's consistent effort for three hours, right? I would go low, eat food, go up, then I would burn exercise or burn glucose and I would come back down, consume more carbs, go back up and it was kind of a blood sugar roller coaster as well. Now, I'll be honest, as an Ironman, this is actually kind of part of the strategy. You know, when you're spending an entire day on the course, you actually have to eat your meals on the go. But for a T1D trying to lose weight, like us, it's not always the goal to stuff your face while exercising, right? In fact, it can be quite demoralizing when you eat more calories than you burned, making exercise feel like a losing battle. See, and this isn't just frustrating, it's biology. Studies show that hypoglycemia, even short dips can trigger adrenaline, cortisol and glucagon, those hormones make you hungrier later, push you towards calorie dense foods and signal your body to store energy. Even post meal drops, the ones you barely notice, predict how much more you'll eat later in the day. So imagine going low while exercising, forcing you to stop your workout and consume extra calories and it makes you even hungrier later on. In fact, tell me in the comments, have you ever worked out only to end up eating more calories than you burned and felt defeated? Now, I want to break down a few myths as well while we're here, uh, like just exercise more. <laughs> I'm sure most of us have heard that one, even if it leads to more lows, just exercise more. Uh, we're going to break down a couple of these to help you get some clarity on what works and what doesn't. Now, number one, insulin causes weight gain. You've probably heard this from doctors, forums, or even other type 1 diabetics. I myself, when I was first diagnosed, gained 30 pounds in the first month. So it's natural to assume that they put me on insulin and I gained 30 pounds. But here's the truth. Insulin by itself doesn't make you fat. Calories do. And before I was diagnosed and not on insulin, my pancreas was not producing enough insulin, so the food that I ate was not being digested or stored properly, right? So insulin's job is to store nutrients 
glucose into muscles and liver, amino acids into muscle, fatty acids into fat cells. If you're in a caloric deficit with stable blood sugars, insulin is actually helping you preserve muscle while you burn fat. The weight gain link comes from unstable blood sugars that push total daily insulin doses higher that then require or store more calories consumed, not from the hormone itself. So high highs and frequent lows mean more correction doses, more basal adjustments, more reactive eating, and that's the real driver, right? Insulin just facilitates the storage of the food you were already eating. But the more insulin you take, like from unstable blood sugars, can lead into higher amounts of that food being stored because you have to feed the insulin, right? So if you have too much insulin, you have to eat, otherwise you're gonna go low. <laughs> and so if we had two people, one with stable blood sugars and optimized insulin, one with swings and higher insulin, different fat loss results, right? And as an extra science note, when you're constantly chasing highs and lows, your average insulin exposure goes up. High circulating insulin plus a calorie surplus equals fat storage mode. So stable blood sugar allows insulin levels to be appropriate for your needs, which means you can be in the deficit without constantly fighting storage signals. In other words, if you control your diabetes, fat loss is easier. If your diabetes is not controlled, you're not gonna get the fat loss results that you're after, no matter how hard you push in the gym. Now, next is why calorie math fails for type ones. So standard calorie math assumes that your hormones are neutral. In T1D, they're not. In fact, we have to replace one of those hormones manually. It's called insulin. <laughs> so unstable blood sugar changes how your body partitions calories toward fat storage or toward energy use. And lows, as we know, drive overeating. But highs actually reduce fat oxidation, which means it impacts how you are going to burn fat. That's why eat less, move more without blood sugar control often leads to disappointment. By the way, if you want the exact meals, workouts, and blood sugar strategies that make this work faster, I put something together that customizes all of it for you. So check the description, and I'll mention it again at the end as well. Now, myth number two, carbs make you fat. I think most of us have heard that one before too, even outside of diabetes, just in Hollywood, right? Carbs don't make you fat, excess calories do. Now for T1Ds, the real issue is how you manage carbs, right? Because carbs do technically pose the biggest threat to our blood sugars in the moment, okay? Now, over-restricting carbs can backfire. You get more intense lows, you overcorrect, and you binge. The right carbs, though, in the right amounts and timing can actually improve stability and help you stay in a calorie deficit. It's not no carbs, it's smart carbs. Right, and there's another way of saying this too. Instead of low carb, it's slow carb. See, I just put an S in front and it fixes everything, right? So pair it with protein, with fiber, you time it around activity. I told you before, I had 202 carbs with no extra insulin because I was exercising, right? There's ways to manipulate blood sugars. I talk a lot about that in my book, The Blood Sugar Freedom Formula. That's my favorite thing is how can I make this situation better, right? How can I improve outcomes? So I look at manipulating blood sugars, making it work, because I actually do like carbs, all right? Uh, but when you pair it with proteins and fibers, you time it around activity, match to insulin, you know, for your body, so you're not riding the blood sugar roller coaster, things actually level out and it works out great. So when I was consuming 202 grams of carbs, which isn't even the craziest one. Some of my crazier Ironman workouts, I'd consume 800, 900, 1,000 carbs in a single workout. <laughs> so it's possible. Uh, but I did all of that with nearly non-diabetic numbers hanging out in the 90s and low 100s, right? But let's back up for a second. So I said slow carb, smart carb. What's a smart carb? Ultimately, it's complex carbs that are slower digesting, like whole grains, starchy vegetables, legumes, and more. It's the simple carbs that lead to the blood sugar roller coaster. Think soda, fruit smoothie with nothing slowing it down, juice, right? We use those to treat low blood sugars, but those shouldn't be part of your, your standard meal, right? Those are the things that are gonna make things a lot more difficult. They lead to the blood sugar roller coaster because they're so quickly absorbed and it's high fat storage because it's much, much more difficult to time insulin with rapid digestion, since insulin does move much slower than glucose, right? It's like insulin is jogging and glucose is sprinting. 
the jogger is not going to catch up to the sprinter. You got to slow down the sprinter by weighing it down with fiber, fats, and proteins. All right. So that's the helpful thing. Otherwise, you could also speed up the jogger or the insulin by giving them a jetpack or just you know, exercising. So, and that leads us into myth number three, which is that exercise alone will make you lose weight. Now for T1Ds, exercise often increases a calorie intake more than it burns, especially if you're chasing lows like I had been in the past, right? Extra training without insulin adjustments equals more hypos, equals more snacks, equals more storage. And this is where it just feels like a losing battle. This is the hypo tornado in full effect, right? And with my private T1D clients, we set up their AIRs, A-I-R, or we call it its activity impact ratios to solve this. So knowing exactly and precisely what blood sugars will do and how to balance them out before they spike or drop is the key, right? So that workout when I went out and I had 200 grams of carbs or, I mean, yesterday I went out and ran a 10K, I knew exactly how many carbs to bring with me and how many to consume to keep everything level, level in the 90s, right? Uh, not the decade, but the blood sugars, you know, <laughs> 90 milligrams per deciliter. Predictive blood glucose management, aka blood sugar formulas, is the way to go, right? So, for example, when I go out for an Ironman workout, I know exactly how many carbs per hour to pack to keep me perfectly stable at non-diabetic numbers. Alternatively, if I have a client that wants to lose weight, we have a specific calculation for them to run to know exactly how much insulin to reduce at what time and in order to work out without needing carbs, right? And still staying perfectly level. And as a bonus note, exercise is still powerful, but strength training and stability beats endless cardio. Okay, so why? Well, strength training, it uses your muscles. Your muscles are like giant sponges to soak up glucose. This is where you get your insulin sensitivity from, right? So strength training improves insulin sensitivity and raises your resting metabolic rate, which means you burn fat passively while you sleep. Sounds awesome, right? So this is what makes fat loss easier without triggering as many lows. It also gives you insulin sensitivity lasts for days instead of just a few hours, which is what cardio might give you, right? So here's my fat loss formula. Step one, identify. You gotta track blood sugar patterns to find the ones keeping you in storage mode. For most, it's the frequent lows leading to rebound highs, right? It's the hypo tornado and it sucks, <laughs> right? So identify it so that step two, you can track it. Track your calories, your time and range percentage, your total daily insulin load, so that in step three, you can adjust. Sync your insulin and nutrition changes together. Never change one without the other. Personalized management is critical for success if you live with type one diabetes like me. Okay, this is the old rules versus the new rules. Old rules, you just go ahead and eat less, move more. New rules, we gotta take care of blood sugars first. <laughs> we gotta optimize the whole system for weight loss to make sure that you actually get the results that you've been working so hard for. See, I have some clients that went through similar processes and actually we have something in the description of this video for you if you're interested. Sarah lost 18 pounds in 90 days with 92% time and range. Notice I said with 92%, that was part of the process, right? You can't just ignore blood sugars and blunt force, I'm gonna lose the weight. <laughs> The only way to do that is to cut off a limb, right? You actually have to have a strategy for your specific situation. And in our situation, does unfortunately involve type 1 diabetes, which means blood sugars do play a massive role in this progress, right? Another client of mine, James, cut insulin needs by 30% while losing fat and keeping energy high. I'm going to give you another example. Uh, Jason, actually, this is another client of mine who similar circumstances, this, you know, James cut his insulin needs by 30%. Jason, <laughs> this is just wild. I still laugh at this because of, it's just absurd. This is where our medical system is at. This guy found out that his doctor accidentally had him taking twice as much insulin as he needed for his basal. And when we fixed that, he realized that he had been feeding the insulin, right? Because he was taking too much insulin, so he had to constantly snack. By the way, if you're always snacking just to avoid lows, this might be part of the problem. But once he realized he'd been feeding the insulin for over 10 years, we fixed that and set up a blood sugar formula in place. Once his blood sugars and his insulin were balanced, he dropped 12 pounds effortlessly. Like literally, he weighed himself and was like, I didn't even change anything. I didn't work out more. I didn't diet. It just melt it off, right? Blood sugars come first 
and then weight loss will follow. It's an unfortunate missing puzzle piece with weight loss in the type 1 diabetes realm, but blood sugars do have to come first, right? And it's not just about more willpower. It's about alignment, right? When your nutrition, your insulin, and training all point toward the same goal, you stop fighting your body and start working with it. I hope you found this one helpful. In the next video, I'm breaking down the most popular T1D diet right now, which is keto. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, it is when you aim to get into ketosis, where it's called the ketogenic diet. You can Google it, or you can just watch the next one on the screen. And we're gonna talk about why it might be secretly stalling your fat loss. Now, if you want my full fat loss formula, comment fat loss formula below. And if you want the exact meals, workouts, and blood sugar strategies, now that we know how critical those are, custom tailored to you so you can see faster results without the guesswork, check the description. We put something special together for you that walks you through it step by step. So overall, thanks for watching. Again, I hope this was helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you want more of this. Keep your head up, your numbers steady, and as always, Keep up the fight.